it's finally happened. So welcome, bienvenido to the webinar on La Danesa. So uh, you guys know that I really love working with cool people. That's one of the kind of hallmarks of any of the properties that we work with is that they're wonderful people behind hospitality. I think that that's inherent in hospitality that you have great people behind it. Um, I also love working with people who are real visionaries um, and they're doing things different. Um, so Hacienda La Danesa, as you see, you know, it was founded in 1870, um, but a family, the Olson family, um, it was actually Neil's grandfather came from, from Denmark in the 60s, emigrated to Ecuador, and he was involved in something totally different and then found this farm and bought it in the 60s. And uh, so it's been in three generations of the Olson family. This is Niels Olson. This is the grandson of uh, the guy who emigrated from Denmark. So the name La Danesa obviously means the Spanish, the Danish, because over the years, the local farmers around there, you always refer to it as that's the Danish farm, La Danesa. So that's where that name comes from. Um, so Niels, uh, has been involved with this from the beginning. You know, he grew up here. Um, this is his wife, Romina, his dogs, Dylan and Lacey and his little, um, his son, they also have a daughter now, which is, uh, not updated in this picture, but, um, wonderful family. And Niels is a really interesting character, you know, being third generation Ecuadorian, he actually studied, he went to school at, uh, Louisiana state university in Baton Rouge, which I think is remarkable. And then he ended up going, doing this, uh, his master's in sustainability, at Monash in Victoria, Australia. So he's been involved in, you know, really into hospitality and tourism from the beginning. And then he has a really interesting story of how he started hospitality at his family's farm at La Danesa. He was actually he spent two years backpacking in around Europe and in Africa. And he actually got really involved in the couch surfing movement, that couch surfing org. So he kind of traveled all over Africa and Europe couch surfing. And then when he came home, he was telling his parents, Hey, like this is the family home at Danesa where his his parents and his grandparents lived um, and where he grew up. And he started trying to convince his parents to have people come and couch surf at their place because he realized what an amazing place he'd grown up in. His parents are like, no, you're crazy. We're not gonna have like these random people come show up and like sleep on our couch. And so they converted two rooms here below the house, which they still use as guest rooms, but that's kind of the beginning of it. So Neil has just been, you know, fascinated with hospitality and tourism as a traveler himself. And so he started having guests with these two rooms in the house, went from couch surfing to actually having the rooms. And then this has grown and grown and grown. Niels is super hands-on. A lot of you have maybe met him at trade shows and stuff, but you haven't seen him in the last couple of years because uh, just because of his great personality, his intelligence has evolved with tourism. He was selected by the, the president of Ecuador, Guillermo Lasso. You can see Niels, the tall guy here on the top. He was selected to be Ecuador's minister of tourism, which is a post he's currently serving. Now he has two more years serving as Ecuador's Ministry of Tourism. He's doing a fantastic job. So obviously, like, I wanted to have him come on this, but he's super busy. He said he's going to pop in if he can, but uh, just super proud of him, you know, coming from those roots and now as the Minister of Tourism of Ecuador. So he's a, he's a busy guy now. He's off at the United Nations giving talks about sustainable tourism. He's also hanging out with Bill Clinton and the Galapagos, which if he does pop in, I have to ask him about this, this picture because I think it's so funny that look on Neil's face looking at Bill. I don't know if... Uh, Niels roughed him up, and that's why Bill has the the band aid there. But so that's kind of the origins of of, of La Danesa is Niels vision of doing this. So where it's located for Ecuador, um, you fly into Guayaquil. Um, Guayaquil is the second largest city in Ecuador behind Quito. Um, their international airport is just as large, if not larger, than Quito in terms of international flights from around the world because Quito is the main trade town of um, of Ecuador. This is the main port town where all the goods are shipped in and out to there. So there's plenty of international connections coming into Guayaquil from all around the world. Um, this is also the last stop that flights do before they go out to the Galapagos. So all the flights leaving from Guayaquil are going straight out to the Galapagos, whereas flights coming into Quito often stop in Guayaquil before continuing on to the Galapagos. So to get here, super simple. You can see the green dot is where Guayaquil is, and then it's an hour and 15 minute drive uh, to the east where that little red dot is, and that's where Danesa is located. So it's kind of right between the coast and the mountains on the lowland plains, really productive areas. So people fly into Guayaquil, they get picked up. It's an hour and 15 minute, really easy drive. You know, even in Quito, if you're going to fly into the international airport in Quito and go stay downtown, that's like an hour transfer anyways, just into town. So this is not out of the question of just coming even for one night or something before the Galapagos. They do have helicopter service in Guayaquil. So if people want to do something super cool, you can fly into Guayaquil and take a helicopter 20 minutes to get right in, to get to land right at Danesa. Um, and the nice thing is here, so this is an ideal thing to do before or after a, a Galapagos trip. Um, the good thing is that the flights that are leaving from Guayaquil out to the Galapagos, they leave between 9, 9 a.m. to noon, and then they're getting back between 2 to 4 p.m. So you have plenty of time to make those flights either out to the Galapagos or on the way back. 
if people are flying internationally into Quito, um, it's a 35 minute flight. It's not a helicopter. I couldn't find the airplane icon, but it's a 35 minute flight from Quito down to Guayaquil. There's like 25 flights a day between Quito and Guayaquil. And then again, an hour and 15 minute uh, drive to get out to Danesa. Um, you know, most people that are doing things outside of the Galapagos are flying into Quito because that's where you have access to like the other properties that represent Mashpee Lodge, Hacienda Zuleta, staying at Casa Gangotena in Quito. Um, not as many people are like doing extensions out of Guayaquil. I mean, Guayaquil is a big port city, but there's not really a whole lot offering around that, except for Danesa. Danesa is just this total gem um, to hit from Guayaquil. So I would say like people that are just going to do a week long cruise in the Galapagos and want to do just one or two nights something on mainland this works fantastic to to do another interesting thing is that actually from where Danesa is located you're only like a 45 minute drive until you hit the andes and begin climbing up so you can drive in three hours to get to cuenca and they can also use the same helicopter service out of guayaquil to pick people up at Danesa and helicopter them over to cuenca in 50 minutes another interesting thing a lot of you that have been in the industry for a long time you used to have the wonderful train ecuador that went from the mountains down to the coast down to guayaquil the train tracks go right behind la Danesa. And there's actually a stop on that. Um, Neil's currently, as Minister of Tourism, he's really working to try to bring back Train Ecuador. So that might be a thing in the future if he's successful in getting that, that train running again, that people that can, can arrive you know, via the Devil's Nose train route from Train Ecuador straight to Danesa. So a little bit about the drive out there. You know, I think this is, I just want to talk about this. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. The route is really, really beautiful driving out there. And I always think that particularly luxury travelers, they seem to go from these kind of isolated pods to isolated pods, but they never get out and really see like real life in a country. This drive is beautiful because you, as soon as you leave Guayaquil, you're out in these fields of sugarcane, of banana, um, mangoes, pineapple. This is a really productive area in terms of tropical fruit. So they have two different routes. One's the banana and sugar cane, cane route. And then there's the Bavarian route where they grow lots of house plants and stuff. So just going through all these little rural towns is really eye-opening and cool for, for visitors as you travel across these lowland plains and to see how rich and fertile the, the landscape is. Um, once you arrive to Danesa, it's a beautiful entrance. They're mainly One of their main products there is actually teak wood. This is a, a teak entrance, kind of a teak forest on the entryway as you get off the main road and drive on to La Danesa. Um, their property, it's 1,200 acres or 500 hectares of land that they have there. And so it's, it's teak, it's dairy. They have a huge cacao plantation. They make their own chocolate. I'll talk about this, but it's a really, really productive um, estancia overall. First thing I want to show you on the property, this just was completed two months ago. This is a new bar, restaurant, lounge area, which I mean, to me personally, I think this is one of the most beautiful interior spaces that I've, I've ever seen. I just don't want to leave it. So as you arrive there, you walk into this area and um, this is all Neil's and his mom's doing. Um, as Neil said, if he could have changed his career to do anything, he would love to do architecture. And I think he would have a great career in doing that because the way that this has been designed is just gorgeous and all the artwork and stuff. I mean, these bromeliads on the on the roof. The artwork is incredible from local artists in the Guayaquil area. It's just one of the most well done interior spaces there. So this is just one portion of it. This is a little library nook off of the off of the main area. People want to sit and get some work done or just sit and read. Um, and look at the bar. This this feature about the bar is just super, super cool. He said it was something that they'd seen in India and kind of wanted to, to replicate this in a more kind of Ecuadorian fashion. So this space is just fantastic. And I wish you could feel like it's warm, it's open air, and they actually have one of the best I think it's one of the best playlists anywhere, actually. I'll, I'll send it in the follow-up email to you, um, some of the playlists from Danesa, because they're just super, super cool Latin vibe uh, playlists. So bar and restaurant area, and then it's all open air. It's these big sliding glass doors. You sit out in the patio, have your breakfast, have your cocktails in the evening. You're looking out onto the teak forest and the pastures with all their cows coming through. So it's just a super, super cool place to chill and hang out in. Um, their restaurant as well. I'm not a foodie, as you guys know so much, but I, like this the new restaurant, what they're pumping out of this kitchen is absolutely unbelievable. To give you an example, one of my favorite dishes, I was just there a couple of weeks ago, was actually an asparagus dish. It was like the main plate. And I was like, who gets excited about asparagus? But it was literally one of the best things I'd, I'd ever eaten. So, you know, they, because of everything they produce there, about 80% of the stuff is um, what they've done. Mr. Neal's, you hello hola, hola. hey man you're kind of quiet but hi clark can you listen to me now yeah i can hear you so guys this is uh -oh. neil i just gave you a little introduction about him and uh he's a busy guy nowadays mr minister but uh um, <laughs> stopping by please go meet neil so clark <laughs> how are you guys how's everyone doing and thank you so much clark 
for for inviting me to La Hacienda La Danesa webinar. So excited. Um, all right. So how many people do we have uh, right now? About 60 plus six 65 people over here. We had 160 oh. register, so they'll all get. All right. Recording. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, well, as Clark said, I'm Niels. Um, I usually, I'm usually wearing my cowboy hat, my jeans, and a <laughs> and a shirt. But now I, I, I'm wearing the Minister of Tourism hat uh, since 18, 90 months um, ago, ago. That I have this beautiful challenge to represent the tourism sector of Ecuador and the president um, of, of our country. Um, so I just wanted, I, I was telling Clark that I would love to share with you just for a few minutes, uh, all of the great things that we're gonna be doing as Ecuador in this year. So we're gonna be attending all of the big travel shows such as uh, Fitur in Madrid next week. We're going to be at WTM in Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo Lata Expo in London, WTM uh, in London uh, late this year. Uh, we're going to also be organizing two road shows in the U.S., one in the East Coast and another one in the West Coast. This year, we will also be hosting, uh, the, we're, this is great news, super excited, the remote travel show in Cuenca. And I think that will be an amazing and great opportunity to have you in Ecuador so you can have a taste of this beautiful city as well. Yep. And that's going to take place in about, about October. Um, we're also going to be launching the international uh Ecuador campaign in the second quarter of this year. So hopefully what we want to what we're trying to do as the Minister of Tourism is try to boost the bookings to Ecuador and help the travel agents to give more exposure to our beautiful country. So many, many great things happening um, in the tourism industry in Ecuador. Here in Ecuador, we're waiting um, travelers with open arms. Um, if you have not been to Ecuador yet, uh, we would love to have you one of the fan trips that we're going to be organizing as a Minister of Tourism as well. So super excited to be here and share these glimpses of all of the things that we're going to be doing this year. And if any moment um, I come to your city, please join us at any of the Ecuador events. I'm sure you're going to love it and you're going to learn uh, lots of interesting things about Ecuador. Cool. Thanks, Niels. Appreciate it. And just to add on to that, so if anybody, uh, since remote is happening in Cuenca, I think it's like October 16th or whatever, um, I have a fam trip organized prior to remote, and we're going to be staying at Danesa, and we're going to be hanging out with Niels, I'm sure, um, drinking some mojitos and eating some of those delicious ceviche. So um, follow up with me after the webinar and we'll uh, I'll either get you into the show or I'll give you details about the fam trip. So, yeah, not only mojitos, beers, wines, and we have also amazing <laughs> cocktails for everyone. <laughs> yeah, that'll be Clark. the next slide we'll get to. But hey, Neil, awesome. you're doing a great job, man. Thanks for stopping in. I know you're busy. It was a uh, Clark, thank you so much for, ha ha for, for having me and un fuerte abrazo to everyone. I really hope to meet you guys here very soon in Ecuador. Un fuerte abrazo. Ciao, ciao. Okay. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> cool. Well, that was a treat. So getting back to this food, as I was saying, about 80% of uh, all the food that they uh, are serving there is actually produced on site. And then obviously stuff like shrimp and fish they're getting from the coast. But so it's really, really like imaginative food, um, really using fresh local ingredients um, and very Ecuadorian. I just was blown away by, the, by the, the level of food they have there and just the service as well and the little details. And then they deliver these like, you know, their own fresh marmalades and breads to you in your room in the morning. If you want to have like a breakfast in bed, the, the spreads that they bring to you are incredible. And just a really, really awesome team that's been part of Neil's extended family for a long time. Um, so hopping into rooms, um, this property only has seven rooms, which is super, super small. Um, I'll talk a little bit. You saw that the kind of the lounge area is huge um, for a reason, which I'll explain at the end, but there's only seven rooms. So this is a really small place. The service is super personalized and on, you know, on, on top of things with only seven rooms. 
Um, it's also a great place. They do get a lot of buyouts when we have people that are like chartering, you know, Galapagos things. I mean, you get an extended family and it's pretty easy to book this place out entirely just for yourselves as well. So let's go through the rooms. I'm going to start with the heritage bedrooms. And this is actually, as I told you from the beginning, when he started with the couch surfing at his parents' house, um, this is actually the Olson family home right in the middle of the property. And these two rooms below are the heritage bedrooms. These are like the entry level, most basic small rooms here, 270 square feet. They only have a king bed. So it's for a couple. And there's just a shot uh, of the bedroom there and the bathroom to give you an idea. So there's two of these rooms on, on the sides of the house. Um, and then these are the new constructions they have. So they've got um, one uh, is a two unit thing of the new garden cottages. Obviously, you can just book out one of the rooms, but there's kind of two rooms that face each other with this open um, entryway. Um, these, so these are the new garden cottages. Very modern, open space. They can either do, uh, you know, a king with an extra bed, or they can do twins, like a triple. So they can do two adults and an extra bed um, in these new garden cottages. So these um, are kind of a more open air design, and then you have this beautiful balcony um, opening up, looking out onto the pastures there. So those are the two um, new garden cottages, and then there's also two what they call the restored stable rooms. So this building has two rooms in it. Um, these are pretty much the same size as the new garden cottages and the same thing that you can have, you know, two adults and a kid. Um, these are beautiful. I feel like a little bit more of a rustic feel with like the whitewashed, uh, with the whitewashed bricks and the, the beautiful wood barn doors there. Um, these rooms kind of the highlight for me is that you have this enclosed outside patio. So there's kind of a walled outside garden patio here. Um, this door actually connects over to the, the next the next door um, garden cottage. So if you do have families that want to have kind of connecting rooms, they don't have traditionally connecting rooms, but they do connect via this kind of shared patio on the outside. And then you have your, your outdoor shower here and there's restored stables as well. And then the last room, the seventh room, this is kind of the, the best room in the thing. It's the original garden cottage. This is in the garden behind the, the Olson family residence. You have this beautiful walkway here with all these lianas hanging down to get to it. They'll often, you know, we have like honeymoon couples or stuff. They'll do private candlelit dinners here in the entryway uh, for guests. Um, so you walk up and again, their whole design thing is really like this Danish higgy thing about just being cozy and, and, and warm and welcoming. So this is the, uh, the original garden cottage. So there are three garden cottages. There's the new garden cottages I showed you. And then this is the, the OG, the original garden cottage here. Um, beautiful, beautiful room. So that's it. So just seven rooms in total, um, two of the the ones in the main house, the two new garden cottages, two restored stables, and then the original garden cottage are that in total. He is talking about doing some other rooms in the future, but we're also going to have uh, private residences on the property in the next couple of years. So seeing a little bit of the quality and what it looks like, um, the Hacienda, let's talk about what there is to do. There's a ton to do there. Um, we do have pricing that's like bed and breakfast, and then we have all-inclusive that includes everything. Some of these excursions are additional, and I'll detail those in the email afterwards, but I'm just going to take you through with some of the highlights. So for me, total highlight here is the Lazy River. They have like three different rivers that flow through the property. And again, this is warm, tropical year-round. The water is warm. Actually, the water is perfect to cool off in when you're there. And they have inner tubes and you just walk down and you can float for half an hour, an hour. You can go back and do it again. And it's just perfect, fast flowing, warm water through the pastures and into forest. And there's, you see sloths and iguanas and really cool bird species. And you're waving to, you know, farmers that are in their fields as you float by. It's just awesome. And I was laughing about this when I was there. I was like, this is funny because, you know, you go to these big resorts in Vegas or the Bahamas or stuff and they build these lazy rivers and people love floating on the lazy rivers. But like, this is, this is what it's modeled after. Like, it doesn't get much better than this. Like there's no white water, there's no danger. You just float down um, the river here. So it's super, super fun thing to do. Um, particularly just because it is so you know hot and humid there, you want to go get in the water there. Um, they have a whole fleet of these fat tire bikes that are right outside the Hacienda. So you can just grab a bike and just go cruise around the farm and watch the people milking the cows and people working in the fields and wildlife. It's just a beautiful area to roam. Being lowland here, it's not hilly, so there's not ups and downs. It's just a great place to cruise around on bikes and just explore the farm. Um, they have beautiful, beautiful horses here as well. So these are the actual stables for the horses. Um, one area, they have a bunch of different areas to ride. Um, and again, beautiful horses, really easy riding since you don't have hills and, and elevation and stuff to do. And the nice thing is there's all of these rivers that flow through the property there. So you spend a lot of time walking down creeks. And I mean, I was... Um, this last time there was like up to my waist, um, in the water riding horses, which I had never done before. And it was a really cool experience. 
Um, as I said, they produce a ton of stuff here. So from dulce de leche to almond butter to peanut butter to honey to jams to everything. But chocolate is their speciality. So they actually had this building here um, is its own separate kind of demonstration kitchen where people can go in to try the different products, buy different products from Badenesa, but also participate in making them. Um, it's a huge cacao plantation. So they produce a lot of artisanal chocolate here. You know, Ecuador is known as one of the best sources of chocolate um, beans in the world. So we do do a tour. There's a, a wonderful like bean to bar coffee making or chocolate making experience. I've done it in many other places around Central and South America, but I feel like the way that they do it at Danesa is one of the most interesting and most professionally done chocolate making experiences where you go out, you learn about the pods you roast them and then you actually go into that kitchen and you get to mix it up and then choose what you want to put in your chocolate. And they give you the wrappers and you even write on the back your name and what's what's in it. Really, really well done chocolate making experience. That was not just for kids. I mean, it's great for adults as well. So that's a super fun experience. And beekeeping. I mean, of all the ventures that I've had, I've never done beekeeping before. And I would say the beekeeping, I mean, this is like a, I'll never look at honey the same way. I'll never look at bees the same way. I've gained such an appreciation for bees and their role in the ecosystem and just honey. Um, the guy that they have that does the beekeeping here is named Guillermo. He drives over from um, Guayaquil and he's just one of those guys, like he's so like, he loves bees. He loves bees and his English is fantastic. And he's so funny. He'll go there, open these boxes, but hello girls, it's Guillermo coming to visit. So it's just a super, super fun excursion. A bit, I mean, it's freaky when you put those things on, you have bees swarming around you, but never got bit, never got stung, anything. They said it's super rare that that happens, but um, super, this is a, something at additional cost, but I'd highly recommend it. It's, it was one of the coolest experiences that I've done in a long time, the beekeeping. And then, you know, getting away off of the Hacienda. So they also do like football for kids in the local community, stuff like that. But a short drive away, as I said, at 45 minutes, you get to the base of the Andes and you get up into the cloud forest. This is kind of well below where like Mashpee um, is. And you have beautiful walks through the cloud forest. There's all these waterfalls to explore. It's outside of this town called Bukai. Um, you also have Shuar indigenous communities there as well. If people want to do, you know, kind of a cultural visit um, to meet some, uh, you know, indigenous people of the, these lowland areas, you can do that. They also have nearby, since everyone's growing bananas around there, they have set up with a couple places to do these fair trade banana plantation tours, which is, I think, super fascinating. I, mean, I just love things like that, that people go to the supermarket every day and buy a banana. But to actually go and see how the bananas are grown, how that's, you know, their process, what are the threats facing the industry with chemicals, all that stuff. It's super fascinating. Um, obviously, Niels and his mom are super into art, as you see from the decorations in the Hacienda. So they have connections with some of the best artists in Guayaquil. So people that want to do like a Guayaquil art scene tour, you can do that driving into Guayaquil and meeting these artists and their ateliers, having drinks with them. Um, really cool insider experiences. Or you just want to chill at the Hacienda and have a massage, you know, in your, your patio or in your room. That's an option as well. So, you know, this is a place, I think, for selling it. Like I said, anybody going to the Galapagos, rather than spending a night in an airport hotel in, in Guayaquil, go out to Danesa. You know, even if it's just for one night, like it's an hour drive out there, an hour drive back, and they're going to have a completely different experience. Um, I also think that, you know, the Galapagos can be really exhausting when you're in the Galapagos for a week. And um, this is such a great place to go after the Galapagos and just chill and just relax. And, you, you know, there's tons of stuff to do, but I'm telling you, it's just like that space. You want to sit there and drink cocktails and eat ceviche and just enjoy being there. Um, and the staff is just wonderful. Super, super wonderful. They've been with the family a long time. It definitely has that feel like, you know, they're, you're led into this kind of secret um, thing. Niels is still often out there during the weekends with his dogs and his and his family, his wife and his kids. Neil's parents are around on the weekends as well. So you'll run into them. Um, and then you get, you know, people from Guayaquil that come out for lunch and stuff out in the countryside. So um, great place to either go and spend three, four or five nights and do tons of activities or just relax um, or just come in for a night or two, you know, to add on to a trip. Or if you're going to do a full itinerary around Ecuador and do Mashpee Lodge and Hacienda Zuleta and Danesa and Galapagos, this fits into it. It's, it's not to be missed. Um, a couple things coming. They are working. These are renders at the moment, but they are working on a wellness center and pool. Because when you go there, you realize that you're like a pool is what this place is missing. He knows that. So these are renders that they're working on. They're going to try to break ground this year um, in doing this wellness center and pool, which is going to be fantastic. And, you know, this is a lot of uh, infrastructure for only seven guest rooms. And what I was going to say is that one other project they're working on is that a portion of their land, they have like 12 residence lots and they've already been sold. Um, you know, mostly Ecuadorians have bought them, but they're basically building, you know, two to four bedroom homes um, on Danesa. 
that people will own these, the local people in Guayaquil will own these as like a country home, but then they'll also be managed by Denesa, so they will be available for rentals. So rather than building more guest rooms, it's going to be that we'll have probably the seven guest rooms. And then in the next couple of years, there's going to be residences there at Denesa that you can rent a full house. And so the residents and people renting these homes will have access to the wellness center and the pool and the common area and the restaurant and the bar. So that's why there's so much common space for only seven guest rooms um, at the moment. So that is it. And I did it under 30 minutes. Very proud of myself. Um, I will answer some questions if people have any, but I will also um, I will also follow up with the email. I'm going to send you rates. I'll send you images. I'm going to send you contact info. If you want to book this directly with Anna, you can also, we, they, you know, they work and are happy to work with any of the DMCs and tour operators, really good relationships with everybody. So if you know, we want to work this through, through your DMC, hundred percent, go for it. Um, miss a couple questions. Um, recap what excursions are included and what's your extra cost you know what it's i don't even know off the top of my head renee so i'm gonna send you the stuff afterwards and you know it's always on my website clarkatula.com i've got all the marketing links and you can see what's included there i think the way to do this is do all inclusive you'll see the pricing for the all inclusive is like totally on par with a lot of other properties of this caliber um david uh i agree but i'm not going to repeat your comment um melissa yeah of course the pool and dedicated spot space you saw it was coming um, Emily asked, is there a minimum age for kids? Not at all. This is great for little kids. I mean, it's a family run farm. I mean, you know, Niels is out there with his little kids. I would say there's not, um, a minimum age whatsoever for kids. All kids are, are welcome here. So it's a super great place for families as is Denesa. Um, everyone just saying great design and everything. Thanks for Niels for joining us. Um, yeah, that's it. And then actually someone asked, they said, how does this compare to Zuleta? Would you do both? 100%. You know my love of Hacienda Zuleta. You know, I think these things, the only thing that they have in common is that they're family run working farms, but that's kind of where it stops. I mean, Hacienda Zuleta, you're in the Andes, you have snow-capped volcanoes, you have the Andean indigenous cultures there, the, the communities um, that Hacienda Zuleta, you can't really compare the history of that place, you know, having been the home of two presidents, um, the soul of that place, you know, I'd say La Danesa is much more modern. Obviously it has that Danish twist as well. So that it's a completely different style. The only really overlapping activities are kind of like horseback riding and then maybe it's like milking cows and stuff like that. So they're really different. I mean, just even environment wise, I would say like Zuleta, I see myself sitting in front of a roaring fire, drinking a thing of whiskey and eating wonderful Zuleta cheese in the evening. Whereas at Danesa, you're like sitting outdoors, drinking a mojito, eating a fresh ceviche, it's it's completely different. Um, as far as buggy, uh, no. I mean, there are bugs there, but it's not anything more that you would have in Mashpee or or in the Amazon. I mean, obviously a lot less, but no, it's not. I mean, they have the the places that that lounge is, is open air. Um, so yeah, I would say Zuleta and Denesa, I mean, they're just, they're both stellar. They're completely different experiences. Obviously, one you get to from Quito, one to get you get there from Guayaquil. So it really depends on how people are are doing the Galapagos. Um, if they're just flying into Guayaquil, then go here. If they're flying into Quito, then include Zuleta. Um, yeah, they're they're super different. Stephanie, has it property air conditioning? 100%. The rooms are air conditioned and the main lounge area, they can turn on air conditioning there, but they have huge fans that are going. So it's not um. So it's not an issue. Yeah, and like Michael Eisman here is saying that's his kid's favorite place. Daughter's 10th birthday. They His kids still talk more about the farm and swimming than swimming with sharks. <laughs> I can understand that. So, all right, y'all. Thanks um, again for attending and I'm going to follow up. Uh, yeah, Ling Li, email me if you're going to be down there next week. We'll get you in. No problem if there's space. Um, cool. So you guys all going to leave this running for a minute. Uh, if you want to plug in any more questions here, I will answer them via email. So expect to follow up and the recording of the webinar in um, a few minutes. Thank you.